1993 was a big year for Charles Barkley. It was during this year that his record-breaking performance as a member of the Phoenix Suns earned him the NBA's MVP award. He had quickly become one of the sport's biggest stars, a household name, frequently in the media and appearing in countless commercials. It was later on in 1993, at the peak of his fame, that the game developer Accolade would release a game bearing his name. Barkley, Shut Up and Jam. The game focused on two-on-two -two games of no holds barred anything goes street basketball, and it featured Charles Barkley along with a cast of fictional characters. However, Barkley's fame would not be enough to carry the game. It received mostly lukewarm reviews, and ultimately the game would more or less be forgotten about, completely overshadowed by NBA Jam, which by basically every measure was a superior game. A sequel to Shut Up and Jam would come out in 1995, and ultimately it would receive a similar reception. But that's not where the Barkley Shut Up and Jam story ends. In fact, it's barely where the story begins. It was 15 years later, in 2008, that the game would receive an unlikely resurrection. Not as a basketball game, but as a fan-made JRPG-styled adventure. Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. A game that thrusts the player into the world of post-cyberpocalyptic neo-New York City. A world in which basketball is illegal. This game would go on to completely eclipse the original Barkley Shut Up and Jam games and become one of the most popular fan-made games of all time. This is the story of that game, and its ill-fated sequel. This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. As copyright laws around the world become more and more restrictive, a lot of the content you enjoy might become blocked. But NordVPN servers, which are located all around the world, can ensure that you have access to region-locked content at any time. Additionally, NordVPN's encryption can ensure that your data is kept safe while connected to shady public Wi-Fi. Just go to nordvpn.com slash wang for 75% off a three-year deal and use code wang for an extra month. I am paid to wreak havoc on the basketball court. Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden is one of the most absurd games to have ever existed in both concept and execution, yet it somehow managed to be an incredibly enjoyable experience. How is it that such a game can even come to exist? To answer this question, we should take a trip back to 2006. It's a story of a small indie development company called Tales of Games, with a deliberately awkward apostrophe S, yes, possessive games. Like the tale belongs to the game. The company was formed by four users of the game development centered Salt World forums Bort, Jeezy, Drool, and Chef Boyardee. Also known as C. Boyardee, and yeah, I'm talking about that C. Boyardee, but we'll get back to that later. The birth of Barkley's Shut Up and Jam Gaiden begins with a seemingly innocuous passage on Michael Jordan's Wikipedia entry. At the time, the section in his article about Space Jam mentions that there's debate among fans whether or not the movie is canon. But the way the passage was worded, it made it seem as if it could be referring to the canon not of Looney Tunes, but of Michael Jordan's actual life. And it was that thought that opened up the brain holes that would plant the seeds of Barkley's Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. And this is a thought that's referenced at the very beginning of the game when it says, The game you are about to play is canon. And on January 21st of 2007, a trailer of the early game build made an RPG maker was posted online and began to gain some attention. If only just for the absurdity of there being a JRPG based on a dystopian future where basketball is illegal. Over the course of the next year, the game would be moved from RPG maker to game maker, which the developers found just had a lot more flexibility to it a flexibility that they would take full advantage of. And it was on January 1st of 2008, a full year after the original trailer was posted, that Barkley's Shut Up and Jam Gaiden was released. The Great Bebo Purge of 2041, a day so painful to some that is referred to only as the Bebo Knocked. Thousands upon thousands of the world's greatest bowlers were massacred in a swath of violence and sports bigotry as the game was outlawed worldwide. The reason? 
the Chaos Dunk. A jam so powerful its mere existence threatens the balance of chaos and order. Among the few ballers and fans that survived the basketball genocide was Charles Barkley, the man capable of performing the verboten jam. Flash forward 12 years to the post-cyber apocalyptic ruins of Neo New York 2053, a chaos dunk rocks the island of Manhattan, killing 15 million. When the fingers put on the aging Charles Barkley, he must evade the capture of the b-ball removal department, led by former friend and bowler Michael Jordan, and disappear into the dangerous underground of the post-cyberpocalypse to clear his name and find out the mysterious truth behind the chaos dunk. Joined by allies along the way, including his son Hoops, Barkley must face the dangers of a life he thought he gave up a long time ago and discover the secrets behind the terrorist organization Blood Moses. A tale of Zobbers, B-Bowls, and Atonement, brave dangers I've heard of, face spectacular challenge that even the greatest bowlers could not overcome and maybe, just maybe, redeem basketball once and for all in. Tales of Game Studios presents Chef Boyardee's Barkley Shut Up and Jam Guide in Chapter 1 of the Hoops Barkley Saga. Many people express disbelief that this game was actually completed, and that's a very reasonable reaction. The idea of a futuristic cyberpunk JRPG based on a forgettable Charles Barkley video game from 1993 seems like one of those, hey, wouldn't this be funny ideas that comes up at the bar, and everybody has a good chuckle, and then they move on with their lives and forget about it. Rarely do these kinds of ideas ever come to fruition, but sure enough, there it was. And it turned out to be so much more than just a funny idea turned into reality. Real care was put into making this an actual good video game. I personally went into the game with the expectation that maybe there'd be an hour or so worth of actual content before the developers get tired of the idea and the whole thing falls apart, which is so often the case with RPG Maker games. But Barkley's Shut Up and Jam Gaiden wound up being a pretty substantial, fully fleshed out experience with a story that, despite its absolute ridiculousness, managed to get me invested in what would actually happen. It managed to walk this tricky line of telling a compelling story while at the same time mocking a number of genre tropes. And the combat system itself was a breath of fresh air. Every single playable character in the game has their own unique combat system that keeps the game from getting repetitive as turn-based RPGs tend to do. So despite the fact that every single thing that made this game what it was could have worked against it, it was actually a very high quality game and people took notice of that. Over the next few years, the game would consistently receive praise from both fans and the gaming media alike. And during this period of time, Chef Boyardee, one of the key writers behind the game, would become somewhat of an internet legend in his own right. After the release of the game, he created a YouTube channel where he would post satirical rants and wacky animations. The most famous of which being his three-part Dilbert series, which bore a striking resemblance to Famicom's Bart the General series. In a way, Chef's Dilbert series was very similar to Barkley in that he took these well-established pop cultural figures and put them in a surreal narrative that's completely incongruous with their established canon, yet at the same time, still manages to tell a compelling story that worms its way into your subconscious. It was clearly a type of storytelling that this man had a particular talent for. And in November of 2012, it appeared that these talents would be put to use once again when Barkley 2 was announced. Warning! The announcement you are about to read is canon. Tales of Games Studios is excited to announce the magical realms of Tirnanog, Escape from Necron 7, Revenge of Kukulain, the official game of the movie, Chapter 2 of the Hoops Barkley Saga. The sequel to the 2008 edutainment tour de force, Barkley's Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. Barkley 2 is an action RPG that continues the story of the previous game and features an open, non-linear world for the players to explore and discover. Barkley 2 pits the player as X114 Jam 9, an amnesiac bowler with no recollection of his past and no concept of his incredible b-ball destiny. Only the arcane wisdom of the otherworldly slam scholar Cyberdwarf can reclaim his lost memories and lost b-ball powers. But first, X114 Jam 9 must evade the sinister grasp of the malevolent AI Kukulain. 
his would-be captor and the ancient nemesis of all ballers, hoopsters, slammers, and jammers. The ball is in your court. The fate of the galaxy, the post-cyberpocalypse, and all of b-balldom is in your hands. Do you have the courage, vigor, and sagacity to slam with the best? Or are you just going to jam with the rest? Stay tuned because we'll be running a Barkley 2 Kickstarter campaign later this month. In the meantime, check out our Twitter account of at Tales of Games for updates or contact us for further information at contact at talesofgames.com. But be careful, the post-cyberpocalypse is coming. Semper Games. And a little while after that Kickstarter would launch. Mystical greetings. I'm Eric, Seaboyardi Shoemaker, one of the lead guys behind Tales of Games Studios the indie game development company working on Barkley 2. Barkley 2 is the second chapter of the Hoops Barkley saga, and it's a direct continuation of the story from Barkley Shut Up and Jam Guide in the previous game. Uh, it tells the story of X114 Jam 9, a wayward amnesiac baller searching the post-cyberpocalyptic wasteland in search of the cyber dwarf, the, the only one who can reveal to him the mysterious truth about his past and his glorious b-ball destiny. And it might seem a little strange that a weird indie fan game like this would even need a Kickstarter, but they had a much bigger vision for this title. We're doing a lot of really new and interesting things with the mechanics. Barkley 2, as you can see from the video, is an action RPG. And we have a lot of really, really cool and crazy ideas for this game that we really want to explore. Uh, this is a game that focuses on exploration, uh, discovering secrets, uh, getting lost in a, a giant world, and it, it's it's a game that we want to make as fun to play as it is funny. Things change over time. People, places, and quests change over time. The things you experience might be completely different from what your friends experience because you did them at different times. The official big idea behind Barkley 2 is that everyone will have a different game. Things changing over time is the backbone of this idea. Large open world. The Necron 7 is a large open environment with dozens of areas to explore. There are things to find in every corner and secrets everywhere. This is a game all about exploration, edutainment, fast-paced action RPG combat. Barkley 2 has mouse-aimed shooting gameplay that takes inspiration from action games like Crimson Land and Soldat, but also RPGs like Dark Souls and Gothic. Stats, classes, and an incredibly deep character creation system give you complete control over your character. We want to make Barkley 2 a game that is not only funny, but fun to play. Randomized Gun System Guns are randomized through a complex system similar to Diablo's or Borderlands, offering millions of possibilities. Shotguns that shoot ooze, machine gun rocket launchers, and gravity rifles are just the tip of the iceberg of our gun system. Even more than this, you can fuse guns together in a system similar to demon fusing from the Shin Megami Tensei and Persona series. The weapon combinations are nearly unlimited. Dwarfnet. Connect with fellow dwarfs and dwarf enthusiasts on the in-game Dwarfnet message board. Jack your cranial USB into the data matrix and search for clues or chat with tech-savvy dwarfs about vidcons, layups, and the latest jock news through the amazing power of bio-cybernetic technology. Clearly, they wanted to expand the scope of this game by a massive margin compared to the original. And there were some really interesting rewards to help them get to their funding goals. Like a Cyber Dwarf body pillow. Or a custom animated gif in the style of Chef Boyardee's Dilbert series. Or a chance to impersonate the developers during an interview. And they actually managed to reach their goal very, very quickly. In fact, not only did they reach their goal, they completely smashed it. All in all, the campaign raised $120,355. This was destined to be one a hell of a game, and it was slated for a 2013 release. And throughout 2013, after their smashing Kickstarter success, they would provide frequent updates on the game's progress. Their updates would often tell of what specifically was being worked on in the game, provide screenshots, and that August they provided some gameplay footage. Only a few months had passed and it seemed like the game was already very far along in development. But a few more updates went by and a few more months began to pass Then, as the end of 2013 was nearing, it was clear that this game was not coming out quite yet. And finally, in December of 2013, Tales of Games provided a new update. 
We're pushing the game's release date by a healthy margin. I know, shocker. When it all boils down though, I think we should blame all of you, the backers. Yeah, that's right, I said it. The reason is we are about where we would have been development-wise if we had made the $35,000 game. But instead, we've spent a little more money and have only about one half of a $100,000 game. Meaning, since our Kickstarter had such great success, we've expanded Barkley 2 in considerably huge ways. I would say the game has tripled in size overall from our original idea, and we are loving how this bad boy is going to turn out. We think the direction that we've locked in on is going to blow some pants off. Not our pants, though. We honor our stretch goals. This, however, has brought us to the current concern we're facing in development. Keeping the game this size. We've seen too many times projects pursue grand schemes regarding its scope and depth, only to fall short or even completely. We are being very careful to avoid this by moving methodically we're making sure what we work on for the game is definitely on the road to what we want to be in the game. It's a tale we've heard so many times and clearly a tale that the Barkley 2 developers were also aware of. A Kickstarter game that's already ambitious at its outset becomes weighed down by more and more ideas and an urge to make everything bigger and better and more massive. More features, a bigger world, more options, more endings, more everything. But Tales of Games were sure that they wouldn't be the ones to fall into this trap. But of course, it wasn't long after this update that they began to fall into a very familiar cycle. The updates would become more and more sparse, the Kickstarter backers would get restless, and then the developers would show up to assure them that the game was still going to happen. So every few months, Tales of Games would return with an update full of screenshots, talk of new features, and a little bit of self-deprecation. Years would pass, and that original 2013 release date would become a distant memory. More and more people were ready to put Barkley on the list of Kickstarter games that never were, but the developers continued to insist that the game was not dead. But finally, after several years of stringing along the backers, in October of 2017, Tales of Games would provide their last update, ironically entitled, Barkley 2, Another Fantastic Week. But don't get me wrong, this wasn't a post indicating that the game was over with or anything like that, it was actually just more of the same. Updates with new features, some new footage, and the announcement that they've added fishing. And after this post, radio silence. And as more and more time passed, people began to demand refunds. Did Tales of Games finally throw their hands up in the air and say, fuck it? And what happened to all that footage that had been shown over the years? Clearly something of this game existed. The cycle of giving some kind of update every few months had ended and nobody had heard a damn thing about the game until June 2nd of 2019. It was on this date that word began to emerge from parties inside of Tales of Games that the game was officially dead. This came about when GZ, one of the developers of the original Barkley, took to the Something Awful forums. Chef vanished from the project two and a half years ago. I've tried contacting him multiple times and haven't received a response. Bort left around the same time to be a family man. The Kickstarter was not necessary, especially in hindsight. The majority of work on the game was unpaid. Myself, Bort, and Chef are the original Barkley One creators. I did not join the Kickstarter with them because I was aware of the many problems that could and did arise. I was asked to join the project three years after the Kickstarter when the project had little money and was in shambles. I was committed to trying to finish the game, but it was consistently set back by horrible management, and I ended up quitting. The person who owns Tales of Games and is running it now had nothing to do with Barkley 1 and has zero game dev experience. He is the TOG PR guy. When I quit, Lazarul also quit. We were the only two remaining who understood the technical inner workings of this game. Laz worked on this project nearly from the start, pro bono, I was tired of the nonsense as well. There is no incentive for TOG or anyone attached to the Kickstarter to talk about this debacle. What were the management problems? An entire book could be written on the problems this game had. To name a choice few, 
there was a revolving door of workers on the game. Many were lured in with percentages. You can only promise so many points. One of the reasons I quit is because I could not see this circle being squared. Divide and Conquer The team was split and there were 50 back channels where everyone had their own way of understanding the game. Goldfish Attention Span A large amount of work was only done at most halfway, then abandoned to work on some other cool thing. Unwillingness to cut or simplify anything despite not having the manpower and the game dragging on for years on end. Management dictating how work should be done despite not understanding how it actually works, leading to needlessly complicated systems, obsolete systems, and totally broken systems. The development of Barkley 2 is extremely complicated and unnecessarily dramatic, so it's very difficult to explain things without walls of text. I'll do my best to keep things short and sweet. Where did the money go then if everyone worked for free? People were paid. The point that I was trying to make in the original post is that the majority of work on this project was done for percentage slash good faith. This could have been done without a Kickstarter. I didn't have direct access to financial info, but from what I gathered in my time on the project, about two thirds of the money went towards wages and the other one third went to other expenses, conventions, etc. I'm assuming the person who is running Tales of Games now has bailed too. Nope. Despite him admitting to me directly the game will die without me working on it, when I finally got tired and said I'll quit unless changes happen, he accepted my resignation and as far as I know, is trying to keep the project alive by finding new hires. And it should be noted that when Chef left this project, he went on to work on another game called Katana Zero. This game actually was completed and was released in April of 2019. After word spread of the collapse of Barkley 2, what remained of Tales of Games was coaxed from hiding. Greetings from established TOG villain BH Room. Besides Barkley 2 dev being 100% dead, everything else you may have seen about the great TOG schism is pretty accurate. I owe everyone a long write-up of the B2 saga. In the meantime, how should I address cues? BH Room would spend some time on Twitter answering people's questions before posting a long write-up to the Kickstarter page. Hello to all justifiably restless backers. I think for this first post, I want to cover what has happened recently and specifically why I haven't updated in so long. First, it's my fault. I consciously avoided updating, even at the request of other people who worked on the game. The reason more than anything was cowardice but I framed it under a strategic reasoning that once we could start giving good news, then the delay would be much easier to swallow to backers. The good news came few and far between, and I would continue to move the goalposts in response. This was stupid and wrong. I should have been much more transparent with how the game was going, and the trials we were encountering keeping the work going. I am sorry. You all are the reason we started working on this game with such concerted interest in the first place, and cutting you out hoping for a massive turnaround that would wash all the silence under the bridge was foolish to say the least. My hope is that, while this is always going to be too little and too late, I can at least explain what the problems were. Second, this is Liam, BH Room, and I started as the producer and was the one who wrote most of the updates. I am Bort's brother. Bort worked on the first Barkley along with GZ and Chef. Most of you know this. I'm going to avoid a massive chronology for the time being, since I just want to get this out, but I am committed to answering any questions you all may have. As the game continued to age, people left the project for lots of reasons, mostly due to taking jobs or losing interest. Everyone still working picked up slack as the game went on, but this game always needed competent and constant development in order to come out under the lofty pretenses we had established. This was my first game and lots and lots of problems at the beginning were due to my inexperience. I do not think this game was doomed. I do think we needed a big rebuild about midway through though. Until earlier this year, the game languished as we didn't really have a full-time person working on the things that really matter in the game. Combat, main quest events, bosses. GZ was on the project last year and would work when he could. In those times, we would make progress, but always, in my foolish mind, just short of being enough to update. As I mentioned, this was entirely wrong of me. 
I would write it off as under the hood work. That wasn't the pop we needed for our big, hey, we are in dead boast. GZ is now gone, and he is the most upset about the state of the game and how we left. I never wanted that to happen, and had always wished that there would be some working solution. That is not the case. I think his points are perfectly valid and his frustration with the game is well warranted. I want to confront those realities moving forward to and make sure that if there is a solution where the game is fully completed and realized, I don't repeat mistakes that might jeopardize relationships I've already damaged or destroyed. Finally, and before this becoming too long for a first post back, I am slowly inching the game forward with the help of a part-time coder named Paperjack. We are both hoping that we can get the game in a better state in the coming months. I will update more about that soon and get feedback on more constructive things like how the game actually is and plays. I'm assuming there will be another few posts for me addressing your questions and concerns and giving more information about what all has happened to get the game in the predicament that it is. I am going to attempt to answer all questions on Twitter and directly to me in KS. Based on those questions, I'll formulate the next update, which I guess will be no more than three days from now? How much B2 is too much B2 in your feeds? Once again, I'm going to work hard to make this right and make this game. So technically, Barkley 2 isn't dead. But after seven years, I kinda have my doubts that we'll ever see it completed, and even if we do, what is the game without the original team behind it? Can Barkley 2 become great without the assistance of the original people who took such an absurd concept and made it legendary? But as of now, it seems like BH Room has kept good on his promise of providing more frequent updates, so I guess we'll see. But anyway, this appears to be where the Barkley 2 story ends for now, and if you like this video, I suggest you watch my playthrough of the first Barkley over on my gaming channel. I'm out. <laughs>